In the early 2010s, Russian commercial space was flying high. They were doing a lot of business and bringing in a lot of money. Then something happened that would break their once vibrant program. We'll start by looking at the state of the Russian space program from 2010 through 2014. The Proton rocket was their workhorse launcher for commercial satellite launches. From 2010 to 2014, they had 43 successful launches. A rough guesstimate for the cost is around 90 million per launch, or 3.9 billion total for this five-year period. Note that actual launch prices are usually confidential, so these are just estimates. International Proton launches are sold by International Launch Services, a joint venture of Lockheed Martin in the United States and Khrunichev and Energia in Russia. And there's likely some overhead to that arrangement, so the money going to Russia will be less than these numbers. Russia sells commercial launches using the Soyuz launcher out of the Baikonur launch site in Kazakhstan. Once again, this is a joint venture. StarSim is a joint venture with Ariane Space, Roscosmos, and Progress Rocket Space Center. In 2010 through 2014, they performed five commercial launches, at a very rough estimate of 60 million per launch. In 2011, Ariana Space added a program to launch Soyuz rockets from Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. This launch site is nearly at the equator, and that allows them to launch to orbits that would not be reachable from Baikonur. They did seven launches from 2010 through 2014 at around 110 million per launch, or 770 million total. With the retirement of the space shuttle, NASA had no way to get astronauts to the International Space Station, so they started buying seats in the Russian Soyuz capsule. During this time period, NASA bought six seats every year for prices that went up over time, costing a total of $1.5 billion. Finally, the Atlas V rocket launched by ULA uses the excellent Russian RD-180 engine. The Atlas V flew 32 times during that period, and at an estimated cost of $15 million per engine, that's $500 million total. If we add all those up, we get around $1.4 billion per year. It's important to note that the money collected is what is known as hard currency, as these costs are paid for in strong currencies, such as U.S. dollars, Japanese yen, or euros. The Russian ruble is not considered to be a hard currency. It is a less desirable currency. This means that the money from these services makes it easy for Russia to buy products on the world market. Now we'll roll forward to the present day. This graph shows the Proton launches in purple and the SpaceX commercial launches in green. As you can see, as soon as Falcon 9 was flying regularly, most of the commercial business for Proton dried up, with only one commercial launch in the last four years. It's not just Falcon 9, however. If we look at failures, we can see that Proton had a string of failures these years, including this notable one. Here's a history of commercial Soyuz launches from Baikonur. The program was largely dead until a rebirth in 2020, as OneWeb bought a number of launches for their constellation. Presumably, OneWeb chose Soyuz over Falcon 9 because SpaceX's Starlink competes with OneWeb's constellation. The Russians have recently chosen not to honor the contract for future OneWeb launches, and those launches will instead be done by Falcon 9. The Soyuz launches by ESA in Guiana have been steady since the start of the program in 2011. The majority of these launches were for European government payloads. 
there is a huge question mark going forward as Russia has suspended these launches. NASA fairly consistently bought six seats per year on Soyuz until Crew Dragon was ready, and then those seats and the revenue disappeared. This chart looks at NASA and Department of Defense launches for Atlas V and Falcon 9. Each of the Falcon 9 launches is one less RD-180 engine that Russian sells to ULA. The reliance on Russian engines has been the subject of much debate in the U.S. government and a lot of weaseling around trying to come up with a policy. Currently, there is a requirement that no bids after 2022 can use the RD-180, but in early 2022, Russia announced an end to sales and support of the RD-180. ULA will be replacing the Atlas V with the Vulcan, which is currently waiting on the delivery of BE-4 engines from Blue Origin. Here's a fiscal update. We'll start with the information from 2010 through 2014, where the Russian space industry was bringing in about $1.4 billion a year in hard currency. Roll forward to 2021, and we see that the revenue from Proton has disappeared, and that's primarily because of Falcon 9. The competitive price and high reliability of Falcon 9 simply pushed Proton out of the market. The revenue from flying astronauts to ISS has also disappeared, also because of Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. The sole bright spot is the revitalization of the Baikonur Soyuz launches with the OneWeb deal. Overall, in 2021, the amount of hard currency the program brought in was half of what it was in earlier years. Fast forward to 2022, Roscosmos has decided to cancel their launch deal with OneWeb, cancel any future sales of RD-180, and suspend the Soyuz operations in Guyana, effectively killing their commercial space program. If you enjoyed this video, please write an ode to it.